Hi, everybody. I am so thrilled about the show that we're doing now. I'm going to be talking to Tommy Toon. Those of you who know theater know the name Tommy Toon because he is one of the most illustrious members of the theater profession. He has won nine Tony Awards, and he has directed and choreographed some of the biggest shows. His performances are known throughout the world. We will return with Tommy Toon in just a few seconds. Thanks to the Camelot Theatres for supporting the arts, bringing award-winning and nominated films, art films, and documentaries to the Coachella Valley. Thanks also to Dr. Betty Baxter, Certified Life Coach and Consultant, Cash Baxter, Rick and Rosine Supple, Supporting the Arts in the Palm Springs Cultural Center, Betty M. Barker Trust, Serp and John Conti Foundation, Stephen Philibosian Foundation Supporting the Arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman, supporting the arts in the Palm Springs Art Museum. Coachella Valley History Museum, sharing the unique history of the desert and its pioneers. Dr. Carrion Foundation, providing scholarships for Coachella Valley Mexican-American students. It is such a pleasure to have a conversation with Tommy, too. You know, Tommy has won nine Your Tony Awards. Away. You bounced a big check. Your mom has the papers. I think the most wonderful is the fact that you won the Medal of Arts, which is made by the endowment of arts of our country. Yes. Tommy, you know, I, I, I hate to jump right to a high point, but I am. What did that mean to you? The National Medal of Arts. They called me and they said, Mr. Toon, are you sitting down? And I <laughs> <laughs> I will, and I did, and then they told me on the phone that I had been chosen, and I was glad I was sitting down because it would have been timber. It was wonderful. What was great about it was you didn't have to make, I'm shy. I know I don't seem shy. No. I'm a shy person. That's why I went into the theater to get over my shyness, and it worked. But you don't have to make a speech. All you have to do is go there and you are escorted into the Oval Office and it is presented to you personally by the President of our country. And, who and was it was president? just thrilling, Bush Jr. Ah. And he was, he's, he, you know, he is really fun. He, there are many things we say about our President, George Bush Jr., but I have to tell you that he is a fun guy. He is really Good spirited and and just levity, and he was he was really funny. And then he took me around the office and showed me his, he had a picture of Lincoln who he revered, and it, it it was it was quite moving to be there. But listen, Gloria, I have to tell you one thing: the lighting in the Oval Office is like heaven. Really? Yes, it's <laughs> like the golden light of heaven is pouring down. And so I'm studying because I'm a director. I'm like, how do they do this? You know, I'm thinking about that while he's saying all these nice well, things to wonderful. me. And I don't know how it's done, but it's brilliant. You didn't it's, ask. it's indirect. There's a dome, so I think they splash this golden light. It goes up and reflects down, and it's just. It's like being in heaven. That's and he should have good light because that's a hard job. Yes. It's a really and hard you know, job. it's amazing how our presidents age. I mean, we see this oh, in front of our eyes. We see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so you, the Tonys, now, first of all, the Medal of Arts that you won, that we're speaking about, this is the highest honor that can be given anyone for artistic achievement. That's right. So that really is something probably beyond anything that you ever strove to achieve? No, you, you wouldn't. I wouldn't dream of something like that. That's what was so thrilling. It just plopped in with like a surprise. You know, you don't, you don't think about that. Well, you don't really, when you're in my business, think about getting awards. The award of it all, the reward of it all, is to get to do it to get to make the show or to get to perform in the show and get to do it for the audience every night. And, you know, you, the, the magic ingredient to all performing is love. That's the magic ingredient. You have to love it. Otherwise, do something else. You know, I, I, there is such a love of theater within you. 
I am not a performer. I just love theater as a bystander. But to me, it's the theater that turns me on much more than films and television. So what is that wonderful spark and that within you that the theater does to you, the live audience? You just said it. It's the audience. <laughs> it's yeah. the audience. I can't do it without them. I've done movies. I've I done know. television. I do it and I'm okay, but I don't really shine till I'm on a stage with an audience, and that's when I'm home. Okay. I'm home. I think that's when I'm all the energies and the talents and whatever gifts I have been given congeal and come together and then it then it it bristles with life and energy and when I'm doing it right there's no sense of time I'm beyond without without time out of time out of time is what I'm trying to say and and it and it the songs sing themselves and the dances dance themselves and I am I am being blessed each moment with that and it doesn't happen every time but it's the kind of thing that before every performance I ask for please God give it to me tonight so I can be there and yet you admit that you get nervous oh yeah well you know what it really is is like water building up on the dam and curtains never go up on time I believe that if it's eight o'clock bang the curtain goes up but people are late so they don't want to let you start while there are people still coming down the aisles. So it's not unfair. It's unfair to everyone. Yeah. But at 8 o'clock and it, we don't go up, that's when I start to really... <laughs> and then finally I'm on, and the minute I step on and start, the, turn, the nerves go. So I don't know if it's nerves or just anticipation. The, the, let me out. Oh, it's, it's like a racehorse coming out of the gate. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Or let me in the game, coach. Let me in. And... Bang, I get to go on, and then all the rest is for free. And then dance. I say I, I get paid. I get paid for what I do nicely, but I say the paying is that waiting for those 10 minutes before the show starts when it's supposed to be started. I get paid for that because that's the hardest part. And then when I'm on, the, it's for free. Okay, now, what? when you perform and you dance so beautifully, and Thank we are going to get into that, and the dancers that have influenced you, but because you have directed and choreographed so many wonderful shows, The Best Little Our House in Texas, I think you were the, that was your first Tony for direction? Uh, no, I didn't win for that, but that was the first oh. big hit I had on yeah. Broadway. And then, and then the, the Will Rogers, The Follies. Yeah, the Will Rogers yeah. Follies. I'm trying to think the first direction choreography You know what it I was, was for, Days in? No, it was for, for Nine. Was nine. nine the musical. That was yeah. the first time I won the director award. But here's the thing. What? Th this marvelous that you've been wonderful enough to share with our viewers of how you feel before you go on stage. Does the same thing happen to you as far as a director and choreographer? The lights go up. The show is going to start. You are not going on stage. But yeah, it's out of it. my hands. Yeah. The, not, the, the, the day of the opening of a show. I bring the whole cast together, and we rehearse little things just to make them not be nervous. Because yeah. they, can, I know what. See, here's I have a little bit of an advantage in directing a show because I've been in the center, in the center spot, in shows. So I know what that feeling is. Where a lot of directors have never been on a stage, they just know how to do their work beautifully. But I know what the actors are going through, because I've been there from the chorus to a featured role to a leading role. I know what that is. So I bring them together and we do this, and then I'll make a little change just so they have something else to think about rather than being nervous. And we're going to change it. We're going to start 8-1-2 instead of 1-2-3. Oh, my God, you're going to change that? Yeah, but it's just that it's just, just start on 8, and it doesn't matter if they make a mistake or not. That's just to derail them from their nerves. So then my job is done. I, we make circle and we ask, you know, ask for, for it all, like we always do. And then I say, may we all be the best that we can be. And then I leave. I go put on my tuxedo and I come back. And I'm not nervous anymore because it's out of my hands. Mm -hmm. It is there. It is their show and it's their show from then on. Is there one show out of all that you have done that is a favorite? 
You know, they're all like my children, and so we don't play favorites. Even the ones that don't turn out so great, you love them even more because, you know, because they're, they're, they're not all hits, and not all your children are beautiful. Some of them are funny looking, but you love them just as much because they're your children. So I, 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 don't really, I don't really have a, a favorite. Did you know as a child that you wanted to dance? I mean, when did you know that? Oh, yeah. Well, my parents said that I danced before I walked. <laughs> Down home in Houston, I'd be crawling through the living room, and the, the music would come on the radio, and they'd tell me. This is what my mother and my father told me. And I'd hear the music, and I would get off my all fours and dance up a storm and then the music would go off and I'd get back on all fours and crawl into the den. I had not figured out how to perambulate but I was already choreographing. So I think I'm just doing what comes naturally. I honestly do. I think I was, I think I was born to dance and that's my root talent and then everything else grew out of that. You had performed on, and you won a Tony I think for Seesaw. As that's a right. Performer. That, that's my first Tony. That was your first Tony. Yeah, for best supporting actor yeah. in a musical. And so then, when the others came, was it as exciting no. as winning the first? No, no. It's your first love. You'll always remember that. You know, other other awards come, wonderful awards come, but of course that one was the establishing shot. And you know, I'd been just I'd been in the chorus on Broadway for many shows until that happened when I had a featured part. And there it was, and then, and to then to that sort of set the tone, you know, for the rest of my I've career. I've heard you say that this was really in the beginning. All you ever wanted to do was dance in a chorus. That was it. That Amazing. was. I came to New York with that dream to dance in the chorus of a Broadway show, and I got a job the first day I got to New York. Can you believe it? At my first audition, my first day in New York, St. Patrick's Day, 1962, I think. <laughs> I went to the audition. And I got the job. Incredible. Really? And my, I, before I left Texas, I t asked my father, I said, how much money would I have to make to be able to support myself in New York City? And he said, well, I would say if you could work your way up to making $100 a week, you would be in high cotton. Well, when I went to sign my contract, it was for $90 a week. So I called my father and I said, I'm almost there. Oh, that's I'm almost in high cotton. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. The theater has changed so much since yeah. you started. Oh, yeah. We didn't used to have microphones. I know. And that it sometimes really bothers me yeah. with a microphone. Yeah, it's, they, they, and they overdo it now. I, I know that you have very special feelings about the way the theater was and the way the theater is now. Yeah, I get a little bit grumpy, but I try not to be. <laughs> I love the humanity of the theater. I love nuanced theater. I love it when I see the, the star breathing hard after a number. And I love it when I have to lean a little bit forward in my seat to hear it. Nowadays, everything is so amped up and so almost plasticized, roboticized, and so much scenery and so much, so much distraction. You, I find it hard to get to them yeah. like we used to. And instead of sitting forward in my seat, I'm back here. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like this, just a little bit. Not all the way, but just to take it down. It's a little too much. And so it doesn't have the reality that it used to have back when we didn't have any mics. I don't suggest that we should be doing theater without mics because everybody's used to that. But use all gently. Yeah. Uh, the prices, though, whether it be production or the price of tickets uh -huh. for theater, live theater, has just changed miraculously. Yeah. I think the used top price when I got to New York and, and for many years when I was in New York Broadway shows was $9.90. Hmm. My daughter was in New York recently. $9.90 to see My Fair Lady with Julie Andrews <gasps> and Rex Harrison. $9.90. That's amazing. Come on. That's amazing. My daughter wanted to see Kinky Boots. She was in New York. $400 was all she could get a ticket. She decided to wait till it comes to LA. That's, but, that's, I mean, that's, that's vulgar. Yeah. And the price of production has changed so completely yes. as well. I don't think they need to charge $400 for Kinky Boots. Yeah. I don't think it's worth it that. Honestly, I don't. Yeah. Okay, what about uh, dance? You are a great dancer. Thank you. You have I love to dance. You have been influenced 
by Fred Astaire, yeah. Gene Kelly. Those were those were the two major ones. And then I love the way that Mickey Mouse danced in in cartoons. I just <laughs> love the way he danced. And and Jiminy Cricket. I I I got a lot from cartoons. Mm -hmm. the early Disney cartoons. They always danced and they did impossible things. I love the way those ostriches danced in Fantasia and those elephants in their tutus. I, you know, I think that choreography is excellent choreography. Well, how do you go about doing choreography? I mean, you just... I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, my what an only the choreography is just you. so wonderful. I don't know. I think that you you try to forward the story, whatever the story is of whatever musical you're doing, as long as it appears to be pushing the story forward, your movements and how you react to each other and all, then I think you're in good shape. If you're just out there showing off, uh, it, it's okay, but it gets tiresome because the people want to know, and then what happens? And then what happens? Yeah. That's the tension of a, of a musical. Uh, show the story and the song and the dance are all there to keep pulling the plot along. Yeah. So well, I think it comes from that. I, Michael Bennett used to say it's not about steps. So I, I go with him on that. It's not about steps. You were influenced by somebody very early in your career, um, Charles. Charles Honey Coles. That's right. This was a little bit later in my career, but he was a supreme, supreme inspiration for me. He was, he was, I was dancing with him, I must have been about in my 30s, and so I was already formed, but I was, I was dancing big, big, <laughs> big. And Charles Honey Coles was 76 when I worked with him, and he said, what are you doing? Look at your size, look at your scale. He was tall also, not as tall as me, but tall. And he said, you could, you could do with more nonchalance. And then he started to calm me down and teach me to do less for more and teach me between, you see, there are the tap steps and they make sounds, but Charles Honey Cole said equally important are the space between the steps like the negative spaces in a great painting. It's not all everything, you can't see it, but you put what you want to show, and then you put some empty space so the, the eye can breathe. And he wants the ear to breathe in tapping. So you go tack, 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 tack. And those spaces, Charles Honeycomb said, made a great tap dancer. So I, I hear him when I'm dancing now. Yeah. And Fred Astaire had an Fred effect Astaire. on you. Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. Fred Astaire came to the opening of My One and Only. He came backstage afterwards looking exactly like Fred Astaire. <laughs> he was Fred Astaire. You had never met him? On, no. On screen and off, he looked like he, he was Fred Astaire. Dressed, he was Fred Astaire. And his first words to me, my idol's first words to me were, you are a tall son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then he laughed so hard he couldn't believe he'd said it. And of course it threw me, it threw me for a loop because it is the story of my life. <laughs> right. And I, in case, there, I know there have been some long shots. I'm sitting on two pillows in case anyone has noticed. I don't know if they have it. Yes, they haven't. You, you've but bumped I up your, your act for me. did not want to be way down there. <laughs> and I don't, I mean, being tall, and you were taller than anybody, but yes, it didn't I was. keep you from standing up. Well, I learned to dance before I got this tall. I think it would have been <laughs> no. difficult if I had gotten this tall and then started to learn to oh, dance. Oh, to learn. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I, I started from, from forever, so I just grew, I, I grew into my body. And of course, dancing is just the best training for anybody, whether you want to be a professional dancer or not. Go take dancing class. It will give you a a confidence to walk into a room, to walk into a meeting, to greet people at a party. There's something about the carriage of dancers. Joan Crawford said that in her final interview. They said, what would you say to a young actress starting out? And she would say, learn to dance. And so would you say that to a young actor? Well, I say the body language is incredibly important. Incre incredibly important. And what about important. someone who wants to direct? Oh. Oh, open your eyes to the world and get older. It, 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 it's a more of a mature thing. To, 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 you, you need to know a lot. 
to direct. You need to have observed life. I'm still learning. Like, like that. That it's a lifetime. Okay, it's now you write. Sport. You are touring now. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but I get so excited talking. Go ahead, to you. interrupt. Yeah. Me. But anyway, you're doing a show right now, uh -huh. and it is taps, tunes, and, and tall, tall tales. tales. Yes. Right. And now this is a show with all these big productions that you've done. This is a show just you, correct? I know. It's a whole new thing for me. At this age, I'm starting a whole new thing with just, it's a, it's truly a one-man show with a pianist. Michael Biaggi plays for me, and I dance, and I, and I travel the world with this little square of, of perfect flooring so the taps will sound right. And it's, and I arc my whole life. What we're talking about here, I kind of tell the story of my 55 years in show business. And it's better than all the other shows I've done. The reaction, I don't know if it's better because I haven't seen it, but because <laughs> I do it. But the reaction to it and the reviews from it are just, at this point in my life, it's so wonderful to be getting these love letters from the critics. They're like, they're like my mother wrote the, <laughs> wrote the reviews. But you they're just wonderful. recently did it at the Annenberg Theater here in Palm Springs. Springs. Oh yeah, and of course everybody screamed and yelled and standing ovation after standing ovation, and you were just wonderful. Thank but you. you're doing this show all over. I yeah, think. I just did the Kennedy Center before I came to the mm -hmm. Annenberg, and before that I performed it in Las Vegas and in San Francisco at Feinstein's in the Nico Hotel. I'm doing it all over. I'm I'm playing uh, Palm Beach for New Year's Eve. I'm doing it all over, and it's so nice to do this intimate show where I tell stories. It's, it's, it's truth in advertising. Taps, tunes, and tall tales. <laughs> and tune is your real and name. And tune's my real name, yeah. <laughs> you were recently... I know it's hard to believe, arrested, but it's my name. <laughs> arrested Development, you've been doing... Oh yeah, I did yeah. that. Oh, that was so much fun. I played Liza Minnelli's brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you do come out every once in a while and leave the stage that you love so much yeah, uh, to do things like that? Once in like a while. That. That's special, though, because I love Arrested Development. It is so off, off the chart. <laughs> it's nuts. And it was so much fun doing it. And this wonderful man who directs it, um, Mitch Her Hervitz, he's absolutely great director, great writer. And you started with TV. Would you go back oh, to yeah. the Dean Martin the show? The Dean Martin show. I did three seasons on the Dean you Martin show. You choreographed and you were in it. Yeah, I was assistant choreographer, ah. but I got to do a lot. They gave me a lot of a lot of leeway. And then I would be on the show many times, yeah, and work with all the great people on the Dean Martin show. Yeah, uh, the great tremendous stars. names. Well, Lena Horne, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, uh, Margot Fontaine and, 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 and Rudolph Nureyev. Uh, oh, and I did a number with um, Orson Welles and Zero Mostel. The three of us did a number together. We look like <laughs> two buttons and a zipper. <laughs> Great. <laughs> now, you, I always say that creative people are creative, and sometimes more than one way. You paint. You yes, have I do. an art gallery mm -hmm. in Tribeca. I've always painted, always painted, and every show that I've ever directed, I've painted first, so I know that I've got it right. And I'm, you know, I, I, I don't follow a red scene with a red scene. I follow a red scene with a blue scene, or you know, just so the variety is there, so I can keep the audience interested. So before I ever take it to the designers, I paint the show, so I know what I have. And if it's not right, then I switch it out. And so, the, so now I paint everything. I paint what? Um, uh, uh, palm trees. I paint <laughs> palm trees. I love painting palm trees and and skyscrapers and giraffes. You, I don't know why. I'm we're just, about. I paint tall things. Okay, we're almost out of time. One of the yes. things I was going to ask you because I was a witness to the love between you and Carol Channing. Oh, and Carol we have Channing a, is my spiritual mother. She really is. I've known her since I was 17, and she has been a constant source of inspiration. And when I have a question to ask about the business, I call her and she gives me great advice. I've seen you two together. It, 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 it's a beautiful thing to see because it's yes, a I would say sweet it's, adoration. I, I would say I'm it's love. Of, yeah, I love her very much and I, she loves me too. <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> Is there something that you haven't done that you really love to do? Oh my gosh. Well, this, this doing this new show in these clubs and in yeah. special performances, this is new for me right now. Um, 
I don't know what's next, Gloria Greer. Okay. I, I'm going to open myself up to the universe and hope for the best. And we'll all be watching. Thank you. Tell me, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this. I Thank really you. You're did. a wonderful interviewer. Thank you. I love being with you. It's such fun Thank and talking you. to you. And I know our viewers do, too. And we'll be back the next time. Your troubles away, you bounced a big check. Your mom has the papers. Tap. Thanks to the Camelot Theatres for supporting the arts, bringing award winning and nominated films, art films, and documentaries to the Coachella Valley. Thanks also to Dr. Betty Baxter, certified life coach and consultant, Cash Baxter, Rick and Rosine Supple, supporting the arts in the Palm Springs Cultural Center, Betty M. Barker Trust. Serve in John Conti Foundation, Stephen Philibosian Foundation supporting the arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman supporting the arts in the Palm Springs Art Museum, Coachella Valley History Museum sharing the unique history of the desert and its pioneers, Dr. Carrion Foundation providing scholarships for Coachella Valley Mexican American students. Tap, tap your